I do not see anybody that has registered for public comment. Um, with that, we will turn to um, disclosures and recusals from the members of the body. If you have any disclosures or recusal, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we will go to our um, uh, discussion items. So let me, um, before we go into the discussion items, um, my hope is that we can um, have a two hour meeting today um, so that we can um, have, you know, focus time and, and um, spend two hours. It doesn't have to be two hours. If it's less, that's fine too. But if we can um, uh, end by eight and um, before we end talk about next steps as far as next meeting, that would be really um, helpful. Um, so um, with that, um, our first agenda item tonight is a discussion of the council's role and, and response during the COVID-19 emergency. And there were three kind of major themes around that that I wanted to put out to um, all of um, my colleagues for discussion. The first one is how do we interface with Emergency Operations Center? The second one is constituent communication and engagement. And the third one is the board committee and commission meetings. So um, I'm going to start by um, opening it up for um, uh, thoughts um, and observations about um, what our role can continue to be doing the emergency. And again, the second item will be really talking more about our role and processes and structure for the recovery um, from the 19 emergency. So um, right now really focusing on our current situation and how do we um, make sure that we're most effective in our role as alders. So I'm gonna open it up for discussion and please remember to raise your hand. I'm sure you all have thoughts. I, have, I see no hands raised right now. <laughs> No hands raised yet. Okay, Alder Moreland. Um, trying to unmute you. Okay, okay I'm here. Yes. Um, I I hope because and I have um, exchanged emails with you, President Badar. I my hope is that at some point we come up with some type of protocol so that if something like this happens again, which hopefully it won't in my lifetime. Um, there is a role for the elders to be able to communicate with constituents and other concerned citizens. I, I felt like I was at a loss. I didn't know what to do. Um, the city did great. The city communicated out um, appropriately. But given my role, I just felt as if I was supposed to do or should have been doing more and just didn't know what to do. So that's my hope for the, the um, outcome of this. Great. Thank you, Alder Moreland. Um, other hands to be raised. I see no hands raised. Okay. Alder McKinney had her hand raised. Alder McKinney and then Al Alder McKinney, would you, I'm gonna unmute you. Would you like to speak now? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, President Bedar. Um, I too felt very much out of the loop. I want to commend the, um, the staff and the mayor's office for, for really stepping up and effectively carrying on. But there was a responsibility of, for us as elected officials to be responsive as well in two phases. One, we were not able to communicate with each other and that was very, very important because our districts are connected and this it impacted the entire citywide. So we lost the opportunity to come together in emergency session and that um, was not acceptable for me. And then secondly, is just to be responsive. We, I did a lot of cutting and pacing and, and sending out um, information, uh, but I felt as though I was a public information officer and and cutting pasting was not effectively um, leading. And so uh, I agree with Alder Moreland is that we 
uh, should find a better uh, a protocol for us to be involved as elected officials. Thank you, Alder Hankton McKinney. Um, next, I have Alder um, Furman in the queue. Go ahead, Alder Furman. Thank you, Council President. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and try to. Um, uh, talk a little about at least my thoughts on the interface with Emergency Operations Center um, number one item on on this portion. Been kind of thinking about it a bit, and it, it, uh, we talked at our last meeting about the idea of alders um, possibly participating in EOC, which I think um, is a level of micromanagement that um, is just really hard and not possible. Um, but you know, the other the other thoughts that kind of have, have come to mind is. Um, could we participate in EOC briefings? And um, I think there are a lot of different problems with that, um, including open meeting laws, including um, some of the content that's discussed there. And then also, you know, an alternative that that was thought of um, was could the, the council chief of staff report back with summaries on EOC discussions? And again, I think there's also similar problems with um, uh, so the EOC discussions becoming more public. Um, so I think, you know, Hopefully, what we can work on is, you know, continuing to get um, uh, better information from the council, council chief of staff, who, who I understand uh, um, participates in some of the EOC stuff on on what's going on there, so we're able to answer questions better from residents. Um, and so, those are just sort of some of my thoughts um, that I've written down and, and talked to some people about about interfacing with the uh, EOC center um, and. You know, hopefully we can talk about a little about how, how we'd all be more comfortable with um, a process on dealing with that, you know, how EOC is set up now. Great. Thank you, Alder Furman. And I just wanted to point out that um, Chief Davis, um, who is the head of the city EOC, is with us this evening. So if there is specific questions that want to be posed to him, he is available. Um, I wanted this time to be really focused on Alder's um, Kind of talking, but again, the, the, he is certainly available for for any questions that that may can, come up um, directed towards him. So thank you. Um, the next order that I have is actually Alder Roar. She wasn't able to pull her hand up, but she's in the queue. So I'm gonna unmute Alder if I can. Alder. My unmute is not working for some reason for all the roar. Um, Tech, can you unmute on the roar? Because it's not allowing me to do that. And um, I clicked it as well. I think she has to confirm on her end. All the roar, can you confirm? Okay, I'll go to the next alder and then we'll, we'll come back to you. Um, the next alder that we have is alder Evers. Go ahead, Alder Evers. Thanks, uh, Shiva. I appreciate it. Um, the, uh, the flow chart is something that I'd like us to address, and I, I think it'd be appropriate uh, to discuss the, the position of the council. And uh, I'm not pointing any fingers or casting any blame, but I would like us to get a new flow chart that shows the alders in an appropriate place uh, as contributing to policy, even in the midst of this crisis, not just retroactively, not just thumbs up or thumbs down. And perhaps the role, uh, whether, whether you know, I don't know where our box is, but I think we as alders should be discussing that. I do think there is a role uh, in the planning side of things when it comes to a problem that's been identified, perhaps identified, uh, bubbling up from concerns expressed by constituents, that there is a place for us to uh, participate in, in a policy response. And that's one of the problems with the BCCs not meeting because our, our process, generally speaking, is to, to work through the committees and to draw upon the experience and the wisdom and the insight of residents in the community. Um, so I know that's a, a, a point that'll be coming up, which we'll be talking about. It's kind of hard to divide the, that conversation or separate that conversation of how we plug into the EOC. 
So I'd like to see some role uh, where alders have access to to the uh, box that Heather Stouter uh, and planning is is engaged in, because I think they're at, that's a point. I don't we don't want to micromanage operations and get involved in that. I, I can understand how that's problematic. But when it comes to policy responses, we should be participating in, in articulating those solutions and have a means for discussing that and taking that back to our residents and figuring out how uh, we can contribute to a path forward. Thank you, Alder Evers. Next I have um, Alder Roar. I'm gonna try you again to see if, if we have any success with the unmute button so um alder roar had to um she was having trouble with connectivity so she's actually going to leave the meeting and then come back in in again um, okay. so we'll we'll try promoting her again and see if that changes anything sounds good Thanks. and the next alder i have then is alder rummel hi everybody um first i would agree generally with tags um summary about let's can we revisit the flow chart and find a more direct um, part for the council to is it could be the chief of staff if that makes more sense as far as you know privacy I don't know of whatever but somehow more a direct route into this this emergency team and my second point is if I do try to follow the protocols I I just want to know the boundaries like I know if something is about the Christ, the pandemic to go uh, crazy up the chain. But there's so many things that are just sort of normal that maybe the pandemic's making worse. Like everyone's at home, so people are getting tickets. Is that a thing that goes to um, the emergency team? Because they would be through the mayor's decision making, revisit whether outside of downtown we are relaxed the two hour thing. So people are getting tickets. And you know it's starting to be a buzz everywhere, like oh, they're ticketing us, and we're, we're stuck at home and whatever. But at some point, there are things that I feel like I should just go to staff, and it'll be in their queue of things to deal with. But I I, I want to you know do it right. But so that would to me is like what's the balancing act with sort of your daily work versus the emergency work, and that's basically. Um, and I I agree with um, Barbara's point about. We're the glorified PIOs. If if people are gonna every day give us reports, make them packageable to send out. Don't write it to me, write it to my constituents so that I don't have to like change it so that it's like it's only an insider thing, but it's the outside words. And then we can just, we can do like she said, copy and paste, but I feel like I'm always like finding, looking for the latest. I check on everybody else's blogs that I miss something. I sometimes steal from others' blogs. But I, I feel like I spent a lot of time doing that. I don't mind it, but I, I just feel like I'm chasing information if I'm coming in a couple hours after the news is out. So it might be good to have, you know, crazy or some way to do a, you know, a four o'clock briefing or whatever it is. That's all I got. Thanks. So Alder Rommel, can I just clarify from my my own notes um, what you just said? So would would one of your very specific suggestions would be like, for example, having like a four four o'clock roundup that's different than the daily updates that Quiz is providing right now, but it would be written like a blog, like it would be like what you would be putting like a a common blog. You can add to it, of course, anybody can add to it, but that like it would be like written to literally take that and make it into your blog for the day. Right. That's or my, you know, COVID update today's date. Correct. Got it. Thank you so much. That's very helpful. Um, Alder Harrington McKinney. Thank you very much. And um, I have two questions and I'm going to add a second part to um, Alder Rummer's request, which was excellent. Um, looking at the flow chart, um, could you explain, and I know that Chief Davis is on the line, where it says liaison, John Halsbeck, what is that role? I'm not really sure because it's connected to um, the to Mary Batari and her block and then the public information block. What is the connection with John 
Ausbeck. So I believe that's a question for Chief Davis. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unmute Chief Davis. Chief. Uh, thank you, Alder. Um, John Hausbeck is our PI or our public health liaison. So every day that we meet as an emergency operations center, every morning, he gives us an update on public health. Um, issues. So we typically get a positive count um, and then typically updates us on any trends um, that are actually occurring or new guidances that may be coming out through Department of Health or CDC. Um, so he's just an information deliverer to the EOC essentially. And I see that the, the um, the, the org chart is up currently. Um, those arrows actually don't connect PIO and liaison. Um, and, and so nobody has more power than anybody else. It's, it's more of a, a circle graph that's in a square mode. Okay. Um, John's role uh, with the EOC is just guidance. Okay, thank you. And so my... Follow up is is that um, with the um, with Quasi doing his daily roundups and um, when um, Alder Rummel uh, really suggested a a summary, would it be possible during specifically we're talking about what's before us now? Would it be possible to at four o'clock or six o'clock, whatever that time would be? is to do what we're doing now is to have a, a verbal roundup of what's happened for the day through our um, uh, chief of staff and then a summary where we can post, um, you know, literally going through and deciding cutting and pacing takes a lot of time. And so I would like two things. One, uh, a regular, what would have worked for me is to have a regular up. It could be from the chief of staff. I would have been okay with that. But at a certain time, what happened to the day and what we're facing? And secondly, um, how he's doing the weekly or daily roundup to put all of that in a packaged information so that we would have that. So my, I have two questions is one, uh, a daily check-in roundup where we can say at six o'clock, you know, those who can um, uh, dial in, this is what happened to the day. This is where we are. And then secondly, to package that information so we don't have to be cutting and pasting. So those will be my two, two requests. Um, thank you. Um, are there any other questions from you, Alder, or suggestions? No, okay. Um, I think Alder Roar now is back on, so I'm gonna, I still, I think you're unmuted, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I think I am. Good. Um, I left for a minute and had to come back in. So um, I missed a little bit, but I wanted to kind of bounce off of what um, Keith was saying, um, especially about being involved in EOC. You know, I, when I was thinking about what my role was, um, I think it was really hard to think about how I could be involved without having access to a lot of the information. So I'm sure like a lot of other alders, um, I did reach out to the EOC team kind of inquiring about how alders could be more involved in the conversation. You know, originally I thought maybe having an alder in each of the different areas of the EOC so that we could be a part of that process. But um, the response I got back from Chief Davis was really helpful in that, you know, because of open meeting laws um, and not wanting you know, all the decision-making processes that happen in EOC to be public information and um, taken out of context that um, it really makes most sense for us as alders to get information through the council chief of staff and to maybe just have a conversation about how that information can be more robust and accessible. Um, and then something I had talked with um, a couple alders about was you know, if we're getting similar questions from constituents and asking the EOC for answers on them consistently, like having some place where we can put together FAQs from residents 
um, so that we don't have to each individually be going to EOC trying to get answers um, on these questions that we're getting frequently. Thank you, Alder Rohr. I have next Alder Furman. Go ahead, Alder Furman. Thank you, Council President. I, I wanted to um, reiterate the the PIO um, nature of uh, like uh, Alder Rohr was talking about and other Alders were talking about um, for for a little bit, and I think I've heard um, or uh, or felt some feedback that. Um, Maybe there are some people that think us being, um, you know, P, uh, just pushing out information to residents or just being a conduit to residents isn't enough. But I was speaking to a, a resident in my district who made it incredibly clear that people right now are, are completely overwhelmed with information. Um, and then when they hear stuff from their elected officials, it makes a huge difference. Um, so I think, you know, it was a good reminder to me that um, even just copying and pasting things and sending it out to people is incredibly valuable and incredibly helpful. Um, so I'd like to definitely see us continue that and see, you know, I'm not sure if, you know, Queasy, our, our chief of staff, is, is the right person to be writing up the prepackaged blog stuff. It sounds like the city is doing that more and more. Um, but I'll tell you, like, you know, this was a rough week on Monday. Uh, we got uh, an email, our daily roundup at 7.53, and the first item in there was from the governor that the election was suspended. And then later on, it, you know, there was a note at the end that says, please see later on. I desperately at that point, when I got that email, was looking for a concise way of explaining what was happening that day. There was so much that was happening that day, and that just wasn't available. And so um, I woke up the next morning hoping that somebody would have sent something out and ended up writing up my own thing at uh, 5.30 before going to the polls. But um, And then the next day, you know, there was a, also on the roundup at, at 6.30 was, please get the word out, elections are today. Um, so I think we need to just be a little bit more focused on what those roundups look like. And I think splitting them up into like a prepackaged, like, here are some great things, go ahead and post to your blog, and here are things you need to know um, that are going on behind the scenes or some good articles. Would be good, but I don't think um, I don't think putting all that on Quasi um, slash the, you know the chief of staff is necessarily the right place when there are other people in the city right now that are 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 packaging these things up and communicating, and we just need to probably do a better job of getting that um, because there are so many PIOs involved. Um, I did want to ask the chief um, some quick questions about. Um, if he has thoughts, um, I'm sure he's heard some of uh, some of what we're talking about today, and has thought about more about what role um, alders can play interfacing with the EOC. I know you know the goal is to try to go through Quasi, but then also getting updates from EOC. If the chief has any thoughts on that structure and that relationship, um, thank you, Alder Furman. I'm going to click unmute the chief. Trying chief. Go ahead, Chief Davis. Thanks, Alder, that's a good question. Um, so maybe one thing that, that might help explain a little bit about the EOC, it is not a policy making body. So we truly, and I can run through real quick what we're working on right now, as far as uh, this week, next week, um, and in the future, we've, we've calmed down quite a bit now that the election's over. Uh, we've handled just under 700, um, requests or items through the EOC triage. Uh, and when it comes into the EOC triage, whatever it is, and, and some of the things you're absolutely right are not um, EOC type issues like barking dogs and things like that. Um, some of those normal things that are outside the pandemic um, don't necessarily need to go there. In fact, um, we don't necessarily wanna see them. However, um, the operations section uh, housed um, or found housing for just over 300 homeless people in about a 10 to a 11 day span uh, in six different hotels. Once we got them placed, now they're working on uh, the support network and all the different things that, that people need to be successful in these uh, respite type areas. That's been a huge focus of operations. And now that um, uh, the elections are over. They were very, very uh, impactful in moving people into the clerk's office to do a lot of additional work that was outside the realm and a lot of things like that. Planning has, has worked on essential services for the city so that 
uh, department heads can have guidance around their workforce. Uh, they worked heavily on the elections and Heather, you know, with, worked with uh, Mary Beth and, and Eric Knepp for probably 12 to 14 hours a day to come up with a good plan um, for our elections and supporting our elections. And I can tell you, and I'm sure you've all read it, Madison knocked it out of the park compared to other communities in this state. And that didn't happen by accident. That was, uh, that was a lot of work that Heather's team put in around planning. Uh, logistics, we are just working nonstop, day in and day out on personal protective equipment. The demand is, is uh, far outweighs the supply currently. Um, and, and so uh, our logistics team works nonstop, all day long, every day on, on getting more personal protective equipment. And then finance uh, is doing what finance does. They, they have central purchasing stood up um, and they have cost tracking and they're, they're uh, telling us um, about reimbursement and different things to track and pers personnel cost tracking. And uh, they're a very busy unit in this EOC as well. The liaisons really are our outside agency contacts outside of other emergency operations centers. Uh, myself and Ed Ruckriegel, uh, spend time every day with the Dane County EOC, and we spend time every day with the state EOC, as well as a couple days a week with the UW EOC. There is no policy making that's happening. It's all strictly operational support. And so, um, um, and that's it. The mayor comes in uh, and, and briefs with us every day uh, to get our thoughts and her thoughts uh, as we plan out the next phases. And so that's, that's kind of where we're at today. And, and moving forward, we've got uh, planning is gonna shrink way down. We've got a team put together to work on worst case scenarios um, for our community, i.e. if we really get a lot of sick people and have a tornado, um, how are we gonna manage to, to continue to provide service? Those are some of the things that that planning team's working on. Um, so, I don't know if that answered your question or not, Alder Furman. And if it hasn't, I, I wish you would ask it again because I feel like I got off on a little bit of a tangent there. Maybe overshared. Oh, Alder no, so I, so I found that, that update uh, extremely helpful. I think my question then would be, you know, do you have suggestions on good ways um, uh, for, for us to be connected to EOC going forward based on your experience so far um, and based on, you know, hearing people feel like they're, they're, they're lost? Yeah, and so I'll answer it this way. I think, you know, I've heard some, some questions asked almost like it's a past tense. We are just on the tip of the iceberg with this thing. Um, we have not seen a significant amount of sick people in our community yet. The stuff that the public health has done has really worked to flatten the curve and, and we're hoping it stays that way. But we've got, uh, in my mind now, is, is economic recovery. There's housing issues probably currently and in the future that need to be work on, worked on. Uh, food, food supply security. Uh, are some of the things. So really the policy driven decisions that the EOC um, hasn't addressed and, and really um, we don't have probably a lot of um, um, interest, if you will. I don't know what the right term is to address that. And so I think those are the areas that as a council, um, there's more than enough work to do around any one of those issues. Um, as well as small businesses and, and that type of thing. Great, thank you. All the firmen, was that all your questions? Thank you, Chief. Um, I'm going to go next to Alder Evers. Thanks, Council President. And uh, thank you, Chief, for that summary. That was helpful. And um, while I don't fully understand what open meetings laws would be violated from having council representation and in these different boxes that are uh, set up in, your, in the flow chart, the in incident command structure or whatever that is uh, supposed to represent. Um, I trust that you can give a good explanation for that. And I hear what you're saying that it sounds like this, uh, the EOC is more reactive 
uh, and uh, operationally trying to put in to place the policies for the city. But the flow chart that has been handed to us shows policy making solely in the hands of the mayor, the executive branch. And I do think we as a council need to have a discussion about putting ourselves, the council, up in a box adjacent to the mayor that we are involved conversationally and in policy decisions that can be implemented. Because it, I'm assuming that this could go on for some time. And without our boards, committees, and commissions, we have no influence and no or, or very limited influence in the determination of policy. Um, to surrender policy making solely to the mayor, I would say to my colleagues, that does not seem right. And I see at least one alder sh shaking his head that, that the idea that we would have a policy role at this time is not appropriate. But I'd like to hear from those who don't think it's appropriate and those who do, and if there's a, if we can move forward, if there's an agreement that we should have an effective role in setting policy that the EOC could then therefore implement. How, do this, how does that look? How can it be portrayed visually, pictorially in the flowchart? And how more can it be uh, expressed functionally as we move forward? Thank you, Alder Hivers. I'm gonna go to Alder Heck next. Thank you. Um, I agree with uh, uh, the, the points that Alder Ebers just made, but uh, Evers, damn, I, I always mispronounce his name when I'm speaking. But uh, I, I, I guess I, I see uh, the question more uh, as how can we collaborate with the mayor who is in that policy box all by herself? And, um, you know, as we've seen, there have been policy solutions to some of, of what's been flowing out of the, the, the pandemic crisis. Uh, I don't think a lot of those came through the EOC. They probably came I don't want to speak for the mayor, but they probably came from the mayor's office in collaboration with staff. Some, no, they did come from EOC, perhaps. Okay. Uh, and I, I just want to... Alder, Alder Heck, who are you reacting to when you said that? I'm sorry, maybe I'm not seeing all this. I, would, I could see the mayor shaking her head no. Okay. And uh, maybe she'll want to respond. But uh, I just, I, I, I feel like uh, those policy solutions must get battered around and oh what do we need what can we do and it would be great to at that point outside of EOC if it's not appropriate for us to be in EOC to at least have a discussion mechanism where we can contribute uh, to those ideas and solutions uh, I don't know the venue for that whether it's CCEC or uh, whatever but but I would say we do have a voice eventually because the ordinance that we enacted does allow us to, to, uh, to amend or reject or accept the, uh, those policy solutions that have come down. Um, I just think we need to be in, involved a little further upstream. Thanks. Great, thank you, Alder Hag. I have Alder Harrington McKinney. Oh, thank you. I, I wanted to go back before we move sol solidly into our policy discussion. I wanted to go back to uh, Chief Davis because the summary that he gave us of what the work was was exactly the piece that was missing. So my question, Chief, is, is that what would it take for such a summary in your view? This is what I'm asking. The summary that you just gave us in terms of what's working and where these different um, components are within the org chart. How would that summary look like if you did an overall update as you just did for the council? Would that be possible? Would that be micromanaging? How would you see that being a reality? I wanna make sure we nail down that piece before we really dive into the discussion of 
policy discussion and where the mayor and the alders fit? Because I need to get that piece clear first. So it wouldn't be hard to give you an update at all. And um, I guess uh, we could we could try and figure out um, how often you would want it. Um, there is no, I can tell you, there is no policy decisions being made. Um, and so to hear about um, our, our work on buying or attempting to buy um, first protective equipment and keeping agencies updated on the changing DHS um, guidance for workers and different things like that. If, if you're interested in that, we can figure out a way to summarize that. Um, and we would just have to know how often um, that you would want to see a summary like that. Okay. Thank so you. Just need some guidance from you on that. But that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That that does, that that does answer my question because when we're looking at process and we are just at the tip of the iceberg in terms of uh, this virus. We really do, and, and figuring out the timeliness and like, you know, how often, that's a process that we really do need to so need to look at in terms of Chief Davis or his designee would be um, providing the council with a, a, a daily, I, I'm not saying daily update or whatever, but that's the kind of information that was missing for me now, I wanted to make sure that that was flat before we really moved into um, the policy discussion. So how often, that's a discussion that we would have to determine, but that's exactly what I would be looking for. The other question I would have around that, Alder, is um, is the, the usage on your end of that information. That would help us craft that message because if anybody uses it as a pass-through information onto the media, that wouldn't work very well. And so um, we would have to know kind of on the, the, the user end what you would plan to do with it, right? Good. Okay. okay. So just keep that in mind too. Right, right, right. Alder Bedar that on the parking lot for discussion. Yeah. And uh, Chief Davis, can I just, again, I'm just going to clarify just so I don't put words in your mouth. And the reason that that information is not information that is widely shared publicly is because it's ever changing and also it can create certain misunderstanding within with that context. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Like you say today we are, we are, we don't, we are still looking for 1000 PPE for our firefighters and that gets out, that can become a whole narrative in itself because the next thing could be that in two hours you've been able to purchase them. Is that correct? Right, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, next I have Alder Carter. Uh, sorry, Alder Carter, I'm trying to unmute. Are you able to unmute on your end, Alder Carter? Because I'm pressing and you're not. Okay, Alder Carter, you're on. Well, I said many words of wisdom while I was <laughs> sure unmuted. So I will just kind of <laughs> sum it up at this point. Um, that's one of the things that I wanted to say, Chief Davis, is that some of this information Let's face it that our emails are open records and, and we've been, um, many people have asked for our emails on whatever subject. And I really want to caution, uh, and she was again said it best, but I really do want to caution the amount of information that we're getting. Um, just recently with the clerk's office, the media got it wrong on when the absentee ballots was um, um, the deadline for that. And we had to go back out and get it and get the right information out there. So I just want to uh, say, let's proceed with caution because it is totally in flux. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Carter. Um, next I have Alder Martin. Oops. Go ahead, Alder Martin. Okay, can we, can we hear me? Yes. My good. Okay, I'm putting myself back on here so you can see me too. Um, 
So I have a couple, um, a couple points. I re I do really like the idea of having EOC updates from either Chief Davis or a designee. Um, I would I, I like it just to have that kind of background um, because we do. I, I know I'm sure that other alders get emails or phone calls about people that say. Well, what about getting masks for, you know, the city bus drivers and, and this and that? And and while it's easy to, I mean, we can say things like, you know, well, we're working on it. I, I would personally like to have a little bit of background background um, to know exactly what is happening and how we are working on getting like extra masks or PPE for um, wh whatever city staff needs them. Um, and then being able to, well kind of say the same thing, but at least kind of understanding um, where we are in the process, not necessarily to let every constituent know or to let the press know or anything like that. But um, I, th I think it is important for our, our own edification to have those kinds of answers um, and uh, ideas of what is going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so my, the next thing I wanted to mention, um, is the point about talking about, well, we're just, you know, copying and pasting, we're being public information, um, officers. I wanted to let folks know that there was a poll from, uh, Marist that came out, um, a while back, uh, March 17th, I think, um, around that time, mid-March, um, that said that when people... When, when Americans are looking at the information that they're getting, the information that they get from their local electeds are the ones that, that that's what who they trust the most. Um, and so I think it's very important for us not to underestimate that kind of, um, whether it is just cutting and pasting or whether it is someone who is going and looking for extra information to put into their blogs or to personalize, you know, that that is a really big deal because they are the ones, you know, we're the ones that that our constituents see, I mean, not these days, but like at the grocery stores and all of that. So they they trust us more than um, state or federal officials. So I, I wanted to note that important point. Um, and then my last kind of point was about the body and, and, um, and about, having our, our policy part in this. Um, and as we were all still meeting, I kind of don't understand um, how we we're, were being stopped from making policy. Um, we, we still can do things. Um, and and I, I kind of want to ask the question like what, what is the kind of policy that we should be making? And, and what is the best way for us to make that policy and whether it is to be included on a flow, flow chart or it's something that we do and it's not necessarily on a flow chart. Um, I just, I, I, I would like to hear more about what kinds of things we could be working on and, and what we need in order to make those changes. So that's just my question for the body and now I'm done, thank you. Thank you, Alder Martin. Alder Evers is up next. Thank you. Um, back to this policy discussion. Um, I, I really appreciate uh, when the, the assistant city attorney, uh, Marcy Pearson sent out um, the uh, the messaging around the, the emergency orders that were issued previously, including a fiscal note. Uh, I would like, I think uh, I would ask my colleagues to join me in requesting that future emergency orders uh, include uh, that kind of information. I think it's very helpful for us to have that, not just, and, and it would preferably if we could have them when the orders are issued not just uh, right before council meetings when we're asked to either ratify or, um, or rescind. And uh, because I think the messaging is really important. And I would also, I know that we have relinquished our, uh, a significant policy role under these emergency conditions on one level, but I would ask my colleagues uh, 
to have a discussion about how we could meet more frequently under our emergency conditions if necessary, because I, I would ask that our mayor would have more open discussions about future emergency orders and uh, telegraph to us uh, the needs that she's trying to, that uh, she feels necessary in order to execute the, these emergency orders. Let us know, let the public know. Uh, I do believe that unanimous votes for, for all these orders, uh, certainly most of them, if not all, would have taken place, but we need better messaging. And I would like to see a role for us to participate in the policy discussion about the orders themselves, if at all possible, which would mean and require special meetings. And if the full council cannot call an emergency meeting, uh, perhaps that we should do that through CCEC. And to get to Alder Martin's question, I do, I do think that's where the we function in terms of a policy making body. Uh, I am not satisfied that we yield that responsibility 100% to the mayor under the direct within the duration of the crisis, and I don't think she's asking for those kind of powers. So what I'm what I feel is really important, uh, again, that I feel is our statutory responsibility to figure out how we can position ourselves functionally and coming up with solutions in the middle of this crisis. And there may be situations, without a doubt, that the mayor needs to go forward in the absence of any uh, checking in and letting us know and asking for our input because it needs an immediate response. Um, but in many instances, our input, I think, prior uh, prior even to the issuing of the order, would be in would be appropriate. So I'm I'm looking for ideas about how we can accomplish that. Um, I'm not comfortable that we would just sit back and be a glorified public information or officer. It's very very important that we do that. I take a lot of time in communicating once or twice a day. Uh, with my constituents. And I don't just cut and paste. I, I try to inject my own personality into that. That's my, my you know, it's my approach. I, I'm not saying that that's the right approach. I take that very seriously. But I also don't think that's my only role, communicating to constituents at this juncture. And so what I'm looking for from my colleagues is a consensus about how we can participate functionally in the policies uh, that are set forth uh, under this emergency time period. Thank you, Alder Evers. I have Alder Moreland in the queue next. Alder, um, sorry. I just want everybody to think about uh, the term emergency. And when we go into a medical situation, we are asked to give emergency contacts. I don't give 20 of my closest friends and family's names for my emergency contacts. I want one person or at the best two to be able to say that this is what this person would want to do. And I agree, I don't wanna relinquish any of our policy uh, making authority to, to any one person, but people are dying. And if we have to, if we need to relinquish some of that power to one person and hope that they make the right decision, and then we come back together two, three days after that's been out there to discuss this, then I'm for that. But I don't want to wait for 20 people to get together to come to consensus when people are dying. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Mullen. Alder Furman is next. Thank you, Council President. Um, I, I think that maybe, you know, um, I'm, if others want to speak more about the interface with EOC, I think we've, we've talked about that a lot. We've talked about the constituent communication and engagement. Um, I think, uh, uh, I think it's a good, I, we're in a good place to talk about more, in my opinion, uh, the board committee and com, uh, commission meetings and trying to figure out how to get those going. Um, the, the stuff that I've heard a lot um, and, and these discussions and discussions I've had with other alders, um, some I agree with and some I don't, is a lot of people are looking for us as a council and, and us and for committees to be operating in, at this time at 150%. 
Um, right now, I would I would say that as a council, we are we are operating pretty close to 100%. We've had all the meetings that have been called for. Um, we're now obviously having a special CCEC meeting. Um, committees are operating closer to zero percent. Um, I think it's unrealistic to expect them to operate at 100% during this time, um, and and certainly even more unrealistic, in my opinion, to be at 150% um, due to the time and effort it takes to get these things going. Um, and I'd really like us to talk about what what we think makes sense to. Try to get these committees going with the understanding in my opinion that um you know it, it isn't so easy to get these things going we are going to start um you know we are uh it capacity aside we 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 need to take into consideration what what staff's ability is um committees actually don't do work um they they give a lot of work to to the staff the staff puts things together and then the committees end up making having discussions and then making decisions based on a lot of staff work and I think it's important for us to understand what staff capacity is in order to support committees going forward, um, because we can't just assume because we want something, um, we're going to get it. Um, and I, I do want to circle back to this idea that you know we need to be meeting constantly about emergency orders that the mayor um, you know may do in the future. Um, I heard pretty loud and clear from the mayor that she has no idea what she's going to do emergency-wise in the future. Um, she's asked EOC for their opinion on that. Um, they're not sure either, um, but they, they definitely feel strongly that that the flexibility is important. Um, I, I think as a council, you know, we should just keep an eye on that. And if we see you know, that EOC is suggesting to the mayor that there, there are these dozens and dozens of things, absolutely, we need to change the structure. But right now, we do have the ability to vote things up and down. Um, and we do have the ability to give feedback afterwards, but you know, I think that we obviously as a council agreed to give flexibility to the administration to make emergency decisions. And so far, you know, even if it's not just life and death, I think it's incredibly important to provide clarity to businesses and, and, and residents as, as our community struggles. Um, so, so far I'm not bothered by what's happening, um, but I, I certainly have my eyes wide open that if, if things happen that, um, you know, we need to give more attention to. I'll certainly be one of the first people calling for a special meeting, but I haven't seen anything like that um, so far um, coming down that, that I feel like, you know, these, these are decisions that we need to meet about immediately. Um, but what would say to my colleagues, you know, if you do see an emergency order come down, um, and you do think we need to have a special meeting, speak up. Um, contact the council president. Um, let the council president know, hey, we need to have a special meeting to talk about this. And that's certainly something that can be put together quickly. But just assuming right now um, that we need to create this process to have special meetings anytime anything is going to happen going forward, I just think is unrealistic uh, for staff expectations, et cetera. Um, so that sort of addresses the idea with the emergency order stuff. But I really do think, you know, with, with the time that we have, that we should be talking about, um, you know, what, what would be useful for our role and how do we get committees back, understanding that staff capacity is certainly not at all. Thank you, um, Alder Furman. Um, can I just take a minute to, I think we're moving into the discussion about boards, committees and commissions. So I just wanna summarize the first part of our discussion to see if there is kind of agreement or, or, or maybe some level of consensus about the things that we would like to see improvement on. So I heard that we would like to have better um, daily communication and um, uh, that Quasi's communication has been really good, but maybe having um, in addition to like the communication that's intended to us, like really a, a template of a blog for lack of better term. And then people can um, uh, certainly change that. And as other Evers, I think that add their personality and their flavor into that, but that there would be something that is more of a, it really looks like something that you can literally take and put into a, a communication to constituents. So that was one piece of communication. The other piece of communication I've heard is to really think about how we can get um, uh, communication from the EOC, but with, with the caveats and understandings of what would that look like, what's the frequency, and what kind of information really would um, be useful information as updates to alders and also with the understanding that that information um, would then be intended to, to be for alders in, in a context of EOC and not something that then would be um, sent out and be taken out of context because that can create a lot of um, um, issues um, for because there's no context with it. 
So that's the other one. Then I heard also to make sure that somehow in the image, the flow chart of the EOC, there is a more prominent place where the role of the council is shown. Um, and so maybe one suggestion that I want to put forward is whether there could be just a box that says to the council and it actually calls the legislative body policy making. Like it's not part of the command structure of EEOC because that's an operational structure, but to really call out that the mayor and the council create policy together. Um, and again, that's in the context of EOC and it's the context of just government in general. So I don't know that that makes sense to add in the flow chart or not, but to call out that policy making is the role of the mayor and the um, the council. And maybe one way to, to do it is to actually explain that EOC's role is not policy making. Maybe that's what needs to be called out in that flow chart. Um, so maybe the other way around. So I'm just gonna put that as an option of either one or the other um, to, to clarify. Um, and then I also heard, and I think that was kind of lost maybe in some of the conversation, that there is a lot of questions that are coming from constituents to Aldridge, and some of them are um, the same questions, but they're coming to 20 of us. So we have no way of knowing sometimes that I got the same question like today. I think probably six of us got the same question about the same issue, and we all kind of send it forth. So how can we create a frequently asked question kind of repository? So that over time, one, we build the frequently asked questions that we can go back to, but also kind of that there is a sense that, okay, this question came up in six different places within or from seven different constituents, like 10 of us got emails about people in the parks. Um, and so the answer is going to be the same, but like realizing that we're sending those tens because we don't know that anybody else has gotten the same question. So those are some of the things that I think we can, that are good summaries. And then I heard um, the, the question about um, the meetings. And I think we can come back at maybe at before the end of our conversation tonight, as far as the frequency of our CCEC meetings or, or emergency meetings of the council. So that, that's what I have summarized. Did I miss? Um, anything in that summary for now. Okay, so then now we are, um, I think Alder um, Berman started the conversation around the, the meetings of the board's committees and commissions. So can we go to next is Alder Rommel, I think, um, on any of the topics, but I, I, I just wanted to recognize that Alder Berman, who I cannot mute. Okay, now I'm unmuting Alder Rommel, who's next. Um, Thank you, President Bodar. And uh, what a good summary. I just want to um, finesse one of the points that you made. Mm -hmm. And like what you said, we all got an email about a certain family in a, a hotel today, and we got a good answer mm -hmm. and that got shared. But it's not even just the one thing where all three of our five or 10 of us get, but every day, like, well, today I'm not working. So I, I have to say crazy heard for me more than maybe is normal, I'm not sure about that. And, and Mary too, cause she's smiling. Um, so yeah, so I pass, I'm now my, my way is to tell crazy and Mary. And if you tell me that's wrong then I'll change it and do whatever. I stopped, I stopped copying the chief cause he was like, please Alder, I have plenty of things to deal with and maybe not this, I got that. But it's still my question is, so every day I'm gonna send stuff to crazy and Mary if there's similarities, when we get to that FAQ, could it be like a daily, here's what I heard about from you, and here's kind of what I told an alder that might be helpful. Because you might not have heard about the hotel and the family, but you might hear about, you know, the parking or the, some other, the parks or whatever it is. So maybe we could summarize the things that our staff is hearing from us as part of his reporting. And that would get the FAQ, but not necessarily that everyone's hearing, as well as the type of information and the communication about the EOC would be, I still am not clear when it is that I should just, like earlier I sent something, and now I send it to Quasi, but it would seem like it's a transportation uh, TE thing, and I just sent it to TE and, and engineering. So I'm still trying to, to figure out what's the fine line between 
having to go through this process that we've created and, and then not doing that. And I don't think we really discussed that, but I'm ready for us to move on if that's appropriate. Thank you, Alder Ronald. So again, thank you for, for the, the detail on that. So I think what I'm hearing is, here is the summary of all the questions that have come up today by Alders and the responses to them. Because I think your point is also, you may have the question come up with you today, and then for me three days from now, but since I didn't know the answer to yours, when it comes up in three days, I may ask it again. Is that kind of where you were going with that? Right. Cause I, I don't, I know that I don't, I feel like sometimes I'm going to spend crazy going off in a million directions. And if he just repeats that every day, it, you know, I, I want to make his life as manageable as I can through this. Okay. So like, a, so, so would it be appropriate to say like summarize all the questions that have come up from Alders today and the responses to those to for, and send it to all of us. If it makes sense, now, there might be something that's very specific that doesn't, but yeah, generally. Okay, thank you. Alder Rohr. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I wanted to circle back to um, Alder Martin's question about like what's holding us back in terms of just, you know, doing our own policy and responding to the crisis. Um, and I think the, the thing that comes to mind is that we're just, um, you know, slow moving in terms of coming up with policy and also that we rely on staff, or I, I personally rely on staff to um, write resolutions and ordinance changes for me. Um, and when I talked with um, some other alders about, you know, what could our role be like in this, um, we talked a lot about recovery um, and kind of putting um, ourselves in groups that focused on different areas of recovery policy um, I'm not going to be around, but you guys um, are going to have a big hole in the budget. Um, there's going to be a, have to be some pretty big decisions about, um, you know, how to how to move through with that. Um, and in terms of responding right now, I liked what um, the council president said about collaboration with the mayor, kind of being the main way that we can be in, involved in policy. But I guess I wanted to hear what people thought about, you know, kind of organizing alders into focus areas for recovery and then maybe including the BCC committee structure in that. Thank you. Uh, alder Roar, did you have some ideas of focus areas that you wanted to mention? Yeah, some that we, um, or I, myself and other alders, when I talked to them, came up with were like food, housing, unemployment, small business, transportation, but obviously room for whatever people are um, think is important. Thank you, Alder. Um, next, I have Alder Evers. Thanks, Council President. Um, so the BCC discussion is a discussion about policy. Is it, it seems, uh, I seem to recall that the emergency orders that have been issued so far, so far did come uh, out of the EOC, and the question was how to respond to these particular concerns. Uh, some from the business community and, and staff were asked questions about what can be done, what kind of changes, what kind of recommendations. And without the BCC structure, uh, we as alders and the residents that we represent really don't have any input into that. And I think it's important that we figure out how to change that and to get more committees meeting. And I, I, I with all due respect to Alder Furman, the committees do do work. We do more than just give staff work, at least the committees that I'm on. And it's, uh, we don't just serve the technocratic experts of city staff. Uh, we work collaboratively re elected to represent the voice of the people. And this is a really critical role for the automatic structure that we have in our city. We're to have a primary place in policy making. And we do that through the boards, committees, and commissions. And to neuter that function for any length of time means that we're not involved in policy making. And so we need to stand these back up. And I really, you know, the Baby Foundation, which I'm a part of, on their own, went ahead and had a Zoom meeting. And they did it through Robert Rules of Orders and kept track of everything. 
uh, they didn't ask permission. They did. They just went ahead and do it. I couldn't make it to the meeting, but you know, I'm on the sustainable Madison committee. Um, that's not one of the, uh, it, it seems to me that everybody there knows how to do Zoom. There are other committees that I'm on where the technological aspect of this is, does not seem to be the standing obstacle. And on the other side of the election, I guess I want to hear from those in the know, what are the obstacles to, for committees to meet? Uh, because in the absence of that, really, we are silencing ourselves to a great extent in terms of being able to represent constituents and constituent concerns in a in a in terms of a policy role. So uh, you know, the transportation policy and planning board. Um, it, it seems to me they should be meeting. Uh, there are there are twenty or thirty committees that I can think should be meeting, and so. What I'd like to know, and Sarah's not here, so we can't ask her, but I would like to find out from anyone who's on this call who can speak to it, what are the obstacles for committees to meet right now? Our staff, have staff resources uh, been, our individual staff members been alloc reallocated in terms of their time and energies in such a way that, that they're not available to staff a meeting? Um, that to me uh, is something that I need to know before I'm content to say, okay, well, this is what it is. We don't need to have any more of these committees to meet. But I think we're at a point now where we need to be asking the questions, uh, what gets in the way for our BCCs to meet? And I think we as a council should ask that all of them as soon as possible should be meeting. Um, and, there, and, there, and that's not, by the way, asking for 150%. That's simply asking for us to get back to the way our city is supposed to run. And I think we can run effectively even under this state of emergency. We must, in fact. Tom Kilder, uh, the mayor has her hand up. So I think she may want to answer the question that you posed. So let me. Thank you, President. Oops, sorry. Go ahead, Mayor. Thank you, President Bedar. Um, Alder Evers, the constraints are not committee staff time, um, although we do have to look on a committee by committee basis whether the committee staff have been retasked to other things. So it's not relevant at the moment, but just for example, Eric Knapp, um, who normally would staff the Parks Board, um, has been working on the election full time for several weeks. Now, he probably will be working through another week or so as we deal with the fallout from that chaos. Uh, but after that, he'll go back to parks and, and be available. So it's, it's not so much the individual department committee staff that are constraining, it's the, um, the tech staff. And so you can see on this call, there are two tech facilitators um, that are making not only this, uh, you know, us be able to use it, but also making sure that it is publicly available um, in a number of ways and facilitating, if there had been any public comment, um, facilitating that as well. Um, so it it requires um, an additional at least one, but possibly two staff on the tech side for every committee we stand up. Um, and we are. We have drafted the entire media team. We've drafted a number of people from Monona Terrace, and um, we're in conversations about who else we could draft and and um, train, um, so that we could have enough people um, to facilitate as many bodies as possible. Um, so that's one constraint. Um, the other constraint is that for every body that we stand up, we have to make sure that every member has a device that they can participate on um, and gets at least a, a, a small amount of training on the platform. Um, but more importantly, that the chairs of the bodies get a little bit more intensive training on the platform because um, if, you, if you haven't used one of these systems before, it's not entirely intuitive how to chair a meeting on them. Um, so uh, it's just, um, it's just time. It's just the capacity of staff to work through each body. Um, 
and do those trainings and um, find the people to staff uh, each of the meetings. The other constraint um, is that we, we currently don't have the technological capacity to host two meetings at the same time that both uh, are um, broadcast on City Channel. Um, so we can, we may, I, I don't want to promise this, but we may be able to host two meetings at the same time if they don't both have to be broadcast on City Channel. Um, but we probably can't do more than that at the same time. Um, and if you look at the our regular calendar of of uh, board commission and committee meetings, there's quite a few nights where there's more than two committees that meet. Um, so we're going to have to figure out um, how to manage that uh, or how to reschedule. Um, it is possible that we could stack meetings, uh, have one earlier and one later, but then we'd need to know that the first meeting was going to end on time so that the second meeting could start. Uh, because again, we we have limited resources for staff and technology. Um, but the IT department is um, it, this is a has moved up uh, on the top of their list. Um, they're working very hard to to get as many back as possible. Um, and it is absolutely my goal. I don't I don't want to speak for President Bedar, but it's absolutely my goal to get uh, as many committees back as quickly as possible. Um, and we are dealing with every request that comes in. Um, I think it's fair to say the same day or within 24 hours. And uh, we haven't said no to very many. Um, and and when we have, it's it's usually been, you can't do it on that day. Could you reschedule um, so that we have the staff capacity? Um, so we are trying very hard to stand things back up, um, and and it's definitely going to be a phased-in approach as we get more staff available and as we get more bodies trained. Because once a body is trained, we shouldn't have to revisit that. They should be able to just keep meeting. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Um, this is Council President. I just wanted to also answer that question to say that I think there's been some narrative out there that the intent was to cancel the, the BCCs because they weren't important at this point in time. And that is actually, I just want to dispel that, that conversation. It really is out of the ability to really, both from a technical and staffing perspective to do it. And our goal has been from the very beginning to try to get them back up as soon as possible. And we've been trying to add as many as we can as we've been able to do. Some of it has been maybe like, can we like have them meet every other month so that it creates a space for another committee to meet at the same evening every other month too, um, so that we, we can have as many come back up as possible. And so I, I think that I just wanna say that if I could do a switch like this and all committees could start just meeting, um, that would be great. Um, um, I, uh, there is no, I don't think, any other intent of not having the committee's voices and processes be part of it. They're, that's why they're important in our regular way of doing business, and nobody's denying that or questioning that at all. It's just a matter of how do we phase it in. And again, that is part of the reason that we haven't even gone out to the, the any further than April, May right now, because our hope has always been that by June we can say Maybe hopefully everything can be back up in if it's not hundred percent, eighty percent or seventy five percent. And so, um, so I just want to put that out there so that that there is not a sense that there is some trying to like not have the committees meet um, at all. Um, it's just been that process that the mayor talked about. So hopefully that that also helps with the answer. Um, uh, and then I would also say if there are, I think a number of alders have raised certain committees. So if there is like issues that, and, and that ties to Alder Roar, I think, conversation, which is if there are certain committees that we feel are really making sense right now to get back up that are not meeting, not part of the ones that are meeting in April and May, because we want to have that conversation around policy, that is totally germane for us as a council to bring that forward and to do that, I haven't gotten such requests. So, um, Alder uh, Rommel. Alder 
Alder Roma. Oh. Okay, we can't hear you now. I didn't push anything. Oh, your hand was up, so sorry, maybe it was up from before. Uh, Alder Evers. Uh, hey, no. Okay. It was up from before? Matt? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. No other hands are up right now. Also, President, if I may add something real quick to uh, what you were saying, um, I did pass along to you some requests from Alders regarding um, uh, projects on planning, and I presented that to you guys so that uh, a decision could be made. So I think in response to that and to some of the concerns that Alder Rommel mentioned previously, whenever I do communicate with the EOC, I kind of let them know when there's a trend in the questions, and I try to put the responses, maybe I need to clarify that some of these notes that I'm putting in the daily roundups are based on the questions that are coming in, but whether it was issues about people still g gathering at parks or um, concerns about uh, whether parking or issues with utilities, certain utility works is still going on. I tend to send it to the EOC and then whenever I get the responses, kind of add them to the roundups for all, all this to, to be aware of in case they get similar questions in the future. Thank you. And I would put out to my colleagues as older, if there is a preferred like um, uh, template of how Quasi should do that so that it's clear, please feel free to, to provide him with a suggestion of how that, that needs to look like. That would, I think, be very helpful to him. Um, so as you're thinking about how that may look like, just if, if there is a template or, or way that you want him to present that from your perspective as an older, um, would make it easier. I think I'm a, I'm going to speak for Quasi to say I'm sure he'll be open to it. And I didn't mean that elders haven't sent requests for committees to be taking items. They have actually. I mean, I can speak like Alder ever said. Hey, like this UDC thing in my district is really important. Can we make sure UDC meet, met? And and we I was like, absolutely, that makes sense. This is the date. Is this soon enough or not? So I was just more talking about the policy piece of it that that. If there are, as we talk about again, policy making, if there are specific um, cluster of, of committees that are dealing with issues like Alder Roar mentioned, like food and housing and unemployment and small business, if it makes sense for um, particular committees that again are not part of those that are meeting regularly right now to, to come back up for that, that, that would make, that totally makes sense too. Um, Alder Heck. Sorry, I'm going to back up just to what Quasi was saying. I was thinking that, uh, like the the FAQ type uh, information might be most accessible to us if it's on a website rather than a, a string of emails, because it's kind of difficult for us to find things when there's so many emails that come into us. Just a suggestion. Sorry to interrupt the BCC discussion. So post it somewhere online. Yeah, like on the council website or something. Great, thank you. Um, Alder Lemmer, I'm gonna, yes. Thank you. I wanted to glom on to what Alder Heck suggested because I was thinking earlier, maybe something like a Google Doc like that we could look at internally um, with how quickly information changes, it needs to be updated. That would be a, a good way to track things. So that's all I have. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Thank you. I just wanted to let everybody know that the JIC is working on an FAQ that would be po um, posted on the website. So if there are, um, I know Quasi has been aggregating them, but if there are particular questions that you would want included in that FAQ, you could send them to Quasi and he'd pass them on to the JEC. Thank you. Um, Alder Evers. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the mayor's explanation. It's helpful to know what the remaining obstacles are. At the March 17th meeting, I, I recall um, when we voted, when we voted on uh, uh, canceling uh, 
the ECCs and given the authority to the mayor and the council president to decide which ones would meet. It was said at that time that, um, that there would be maybe a next round where the, you know you would identify this, these four or five essential committees which I notice ALRC is back in there. I'm, I'm, I, as an aside, maybe somebody can explain how that happened because, uh, but more to the point um, in the calendar for April and May, nobody asked me as an alder specifically. Now I hear that I could have, I, I could have pushed for a, a committee to meet, but um, again, I, I, I didn't realize that, that that was an appropriate thing for me to do. So. Going back to that March 17th meeting where where I think the mayor said that at a certain point, you know, th there'd be like a next category. You've got your four or five that have to meet in order for the business of the city, you know, like finance, Board of Public Works, this and that. Um, so has there been a discussion as to the next round? And if there are limits and constraints as to how many can meet, meet can we identify? Is it 20? Can 20 meet now? Uh, it can and can we and what is what is the ETA for if that decision's not been made when can we expect it? Um, because I, you know, otherwise I feel like we're just going to let this go and inertia will set in and it'll be individual issues on an issue oriented thing. I've got this development thing. Somebody needs to go to UDC. Can we stand up this for this one meeting? Yeah, that's good. I want to see these meetings or these committees actually be empowered to continue to meet, not ad hoc, not when an issue arises, but to be empowered as soon as the staff is there to do so. And, and as soon as the technology is there. So, so my, question, Alder, my question, when, where are we at with making that decision? So I, Alder, I can give you the list of the next uh, group of committees that has been talked about. Um, so food policy, landlord, tenant, housing strategy, CDBG, CDD, EDD, and a complete count. And that one just because we're in the midst of census. So those are some of the ones that we've uh, we've talked about. And as you know, <clears throat> UDC um, landmarks and ZBA were added from that shorter list that we had again on March 17th. That seems like so long ago to me, but so. These are some additional ones, but the, the ones that I just mentioned, food policy, landlord, tenant, housing strategy, CDBG, CDD, EDD, were really out of the converse, out of the thinking of, I think Alder, Alder Rohr mentioned like food, housing, unemployment, transportation, and um, small business are some of the issues that really we need to kind of start thinking from a policy perspective. So these were the committees that, that fit within um, exactly the same conversation. I mean, separately, but the mayor and I were having a conversation about what are the, the big issues that, were, that are happening now and are gonna be long-term issues. And so these committees were certainly a big priority. So <clears throat> again, throwing that out there for, you know, if there are additional list. And again, understanding all of us would like every one of them to be back on. Nobody questions that. I don't think that's a, that there is a, there is a contradiction there that someone, it's just the barriers that the mayor mentioned. So we're trying to just ramp it up um, with step one, step two, step three, and then hopefully step four will be like a hundred percent. So that is that responsive to your question, Alder? You have your, I mean, yes. Well, um, yeah, that's helpful. Um, but I, actually I was asking for something more specific. How many do you think we could do right now? Can we do 20 meetings with staff right now? Not no. yet? Okay, 10, we can, so it sounds like we're, we're going up incrementally, but um, it would be helpful for me and I think for my colleagues, as soon as you have an idea of when we can do more to just be forthcoming with that information that I think that's helpful. I'd like to know, maybe my colleagues uh, aren't concerned about it, but um, part, you know, uh, part, of the, part of the reason that I, I hadn't sent this shorter list is because I wanted a conversation tonight about it, which is why I put it on the agenda. So that these are these are the ideas that the mayor, these, these were the lists that the mayor and, and myself discussed. 
but I want to put it out there that if there are other priority ones, um, again, understanding that we all want every one of them, but we're not going to be able to do that immediately. So are there others that like there is like really a need to to like prioritize the sooner than as soon as possible. So um, so that that was the reason so that we could finalize the list and then start plotting them on a calendar and see where they would fall in their normal meeting schedule and then have that discussion, which is, can they be moved? And as you know, changing meeting dates and times is not an easy feat because they're the members of the community that participate would need to um, respond to a doodle or to a request and then we need to find quorum. So that's that's the work that needs to happen. Okay, Alder Harrington Mc Kinney. Thank you very much, um, President Bedar. Um, I'm going to go back to um, Alder Evers and his question is, is that you listed a short list of boards, committees, and commissions. And I, I wanted to specifically hear uh, at what point do we have input on that selection? I know that you said that you know, this is the purpose of the meeting that we're having now. But that's one of the things I want to lift up is that, um, one, we've talked about um, areas that we identify that need to be prioritized. Um, and so, so how is that list crafted? And when, does, when do alders have opportunity to input into those subject areas that we want to prioritize? And then really very, very important is, is that um, when that list is um, developed, it is really important, not at just this point, uh, for alders to know that they have the opportunity to not only look at that list, to, but to input into that list. And so that's one of the things I, I heard you address tonight, but I don't know if alders knew that they had the opportunity to add to that list before it becomes a finalized list. So let me let me clarify again. There, there is no sign. The, the only list that there was was the short list on March 17. And after that, if you've been following the calendar you're getting, it's more than what was on that short list. There's additional committees that were immediately even after that meeting added. And tonight would be the time to, again, if we're talking about this conversation of how the policy making role of the council matches with the priorities of committees that need to, to match that those policy priorities, it would be a good time for us to really make a list of, again, the committees that we would like to see come back uh, in their regular meeting as soon as possible. Um, with again the understanding that we are not going to be able to have a hundred percent of committees back on nor 25 immediately but kind of making a list would be helpful sure sure and just to follow up is that once we have that list absolutely prioritizing and how many and that was one of the questions that came up how many um uh, meetings can it facilitate but to have that long list for alders to look at that long list and for us to prioritize, because as you said, we're not going to be able to have all of these committees stand up at the same time, but really to uh, do uh, to phase in those uh, committee boards, committees and commissions that we can stand up. And then for us to have some input into where those priority areas are. And I think that that, not think, that that's one of the pieces that really is very important is to get that list and then also for alders to be able to weigh in on what those priorities are and to phase those, those boards, committees and commissions uh, back in because um, um, the, uh, and as said by the mayor, it's just that we just don't have the, and Sarah said it in her presentation is that there just is not staffing to stand up all those committees at the same time, but we definitely need to have some input on what that priority list needs to look like. Thank you, Alder. And next I have Alder Heck. Uh, thank you. Uh, I agree with Alder McKinney, definitely. I think that we, we really do need to think about how we can have input into how these uh, are prioritized. And 
I, and I appreciate uh, President uh, Bedar offering those committees that are kind of on in the next tier, but perhaps we could uh, have kind of an informal ranking exercise that all alders can participate in. And uh, that, you know, that doesn't mean we're, you know, making a decision, but it's a little bit hard to to hear four or five committees real quickly and say yay or nay or wait a minute, what about this? I, I don't know how such an exercise could be could be accomplished, but it doesn't seem too complicated. And, and the other point I want to make is that uh, um, most of the BCCs have alders who sit on them, and uh, I sit on plan commission and. Um, I would say at times we have as many as eight staff people at a plan commission meeting, and we could look at that list ourselves and, and guesstimate how many staff people are required beyond IT and um, understand what the implications are that, of that. And so we could even help complete that list since we're all we're on most of these committees. Just a thought. Thanks. Thank you, Alder Herc. Um, since uh, it'd be great if, if um, that's a great idea to rank them, I think based on some criteria, right? Because I think, again, we all can, can the reason this committee exists is because we think collectively we're not eliminating them, so they have a, a role to play, right? So if we ha can have a criteria in that selection, that would be great. And I would take anybody's help in De designing some process by which we could do that. So um, again, I want to go back to a few, maybe 20 minutes back when Alder Roar, for example, mentioned some areas of focus during this time for recovery. And so whether that's a criteria and then another criteria is because those committees see very regular items that come before them that like plan commission, right? Like there is things that have to happen or whatever the criteria is, but it would be very helpful if um, a couple of alders would want to um, talk about how to develop some methodology by which we can rank the committee, um, how quickly the committees can start meeting again. Is that making sense? Thank you. <laughs> so it goes like, if you have an idea, you get a task. <laughs> so if, thank you. If, I can, if we do develop something like this, uh, I would also encourage my fellow alders uh, to uh, provide input to that list based not just on what's best for your district. Uh, like like Alder Evers, I'm anxious for UDC to get to be up and going because I have development matters in my district. But we need to think bigger in in terms of what will help the city through this lens of the pandemic. Thanks. Thank you, Alder Carter. Yes, I was just going to say that um, if we could get, you, you you said you had a short list and you added five or so committees to that already existing list. So really we're looking at what's not on that list and prioritizing that, correct? Or the, the short list I just gave, I mean, it, it certainly, you know, those are those are the ones that, that, that um, I, I you know, it's, it's a short list, but yeah, I mean, we could be like, those could change if people don't feel that these were key committees. I, I hate to use the word key committee. That's like, I'm just using it for the purpose of right now, but the next round. Okay, so I would, I would like to see how we're going to phase in the next round versus trying to look at the existing list and saying this one shouldn't be there and that one shouldn't be there because the whole goal is to getting all these committees up and running. Thank you. Got it. Thank you so much, Alder Carter. Um, Alder Rommel. Uh, Alder Rommel. I mentioned ALRC and we never got answered. It's just a reminder and I know everyone knows that the annual renewal process is coming. So that seems to me to be something that, you know, it's something that needs to start sooner than later because, and I don't know if there are issues and they're not open, but 
I mean, that's something that is a like a kind of a long involved process, as I'm sure Alder Revere and Alder Skidmore can uh, remind us if we need it. But for me, um, one of the things I would make sure we look at, besides I, I like the whole notion of the recovery, um, is that what's already in the queue waiting to come forward. So, and I'm sure Alder Vidar and the mayor have looked at that, but you know, I, I'm just thinking out, I don't know all the things, but say T Fogs is still making its way around. Or something is, or we have all it's the summer of reconstruction of streets, maybe. So does the so the plans and specs need to get approved. So, I mean, I would look at it more like what what's coming up that we need to deal with. I mean, there's a lot of, like we all know, we think all the committees do important work, but it seems like some things have a, a an annual schedule or a seasonal schedule or a topical, it's working its way through. And I think that would be one thing. And I guess finally, and it's, I don't know that I would know how to, to do this, but like the budget, has some new initiatives. So like Walter Heck and I have a new initiative to try to do something in around TID 36. Well, I checked in with staff and they say it's still in planning, but I mean, planning like with a small P. Um, but you know, those are kind of things like I want to know about. It wouldn't be a committee meeting, but it would be a meeting that I would want to have staff support for. And so there's those kind of, you know, I think that we all could sort of kind of break it down in different ways, not just our own district, but you know, what we know that is moving forward or plans that we've adopted in the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alder Harrington McKinney, do you, are you up again? Or uh, Yes, yes, I am. So uh, two comments. One is, is that the, um, what I'm hearing is that the mayor and the president, um, they're not the total decision-making bodies. I mean, there are all of us as alders will input into that whiteboard. And when I say a whiteboard is to list, as Alder Rummel will say, what are the areas, not just specifically to our districts, what are the areas that are that we can prioritize? So we need to have a whiteboard of listing. And I just um, uh, recall how we've been doing in our communications. We really started out with a whiteboard of information. And so if we had a whiteboard that, that lists the the boards, committees, and committees, and what is what is percolating within those bodies to determine, you know, what's a, a top priority, what's a second phase, and what's a third phase. And so we've all been throwing out boards, committees, and commissions that we've been working on. But until we really start putting pen and paper and having that whiteboard and really looking at where uh, work is at what phase that we can really determine you know, where those priorities are, where those phases are. Um, so I would remind my colleagues is that um, it is not the mayor nor the president nor their intentions to make those decisions. Those decisions belong to all of us. And so we should be exercising. There's nothing that would keep us from exercising. There's nothing that came from the president that say we cannot exercise that list. There's nothing that came from the mayor that says that we cannot give input on that list. And so it's up to us then to take on our responsibility and form those. This is what we're working on. These are the phases and these are the priorities. And then we can actually look at what's up there. We can talk about it, but until we actually have a document that we can go through, it is really conversation and not any concrete. And so that's one of the things that I would list that we actually need to move on is developing that whiteboard of where the, the priorities are in terms of boards, committees, and commissions. Thank you. Thank you, um, Vice President Hector McKinney. Um, next, I have in the queue, Alder Heck. Thank you. Um, just uh, kind of going off of that and some earlier comments, um, as well as thinking about the budget, I, I feel like uh, I imagine the mayor's already having sleepless nights about the budget and, and everything else combined, I'm sure. But I think we can start thinking about um, the budget. And even if we don't know exactly what the numbers are going to be by any means, uh, some of what Alder Rohr talked about in terms of recovery um, <clears throat> and our 
continuing reaction to real-time developments it, uh, are going to frame our budget discussion in the future and uh, make it very complicated to follow a, a typical budget cycle pattern. Uh, so I'm, I, I can imagine us also uh, starting to use BCCs to help us with that process. And, and I don't really know how that process can work, but I think that's something we need to start thinking about policy-wise right, right away. Thanks. Thank you, Alder Heck. Alder Furman. Thank you, Council President. Um, I appreciate the updates on um, uh, the IT capacity and the ability to get stuff up, I think. Uh, and, and then also the ask that people, uh, you know, we figure out some sort of process of, of talking about um, what committees should continue to come up as more capacity is available, um, and why? Um, you know, here here is the uh, you know the priority reason for it. I do just want to caution people: we have no idea how long it's going to take to get the next set of committees up and running, and so I don't want everybody thinking that you know we're, we're about. It sounds like we're about to embark on a pretty big task of getting a few more very important committees going. Um, that could take that could take a while, um, but I do think it's a good idea for us to spend some time um, while that's ongoing, um, starting to prioritize um, the 100 or so uh, BCCs we have, um, and prioritize um, when those get up and running. If we're still in this state of not being able to meet in person and still in a position of having limited meetings. Thank you, um, Alder Foster is next. Oops. Alder Foster. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I was going to recommend that uh, I think something that we're going to need to start to pivot on is um, moving away from having decision making being so centralized and starting to empower more people to, to do that work. And I think this might be one of those opportunities where we're talking about decision making that right now lies with council president and the mayor. Uh, we're just talking about the council saying, well, we should be participating in this. I think in terms of understanding where we're at with our boards, committees, and commissions and our ability to prioritize those, we really should be going out to the board committee commission chairs, to the alders that are on those board committee commissions, and also the staff uh, of those board committees and commissions. And I think all three of those stakeholder groups um, should be submitting information right now about any outstanding items um, that have particularly those that have um, specific timelines associated with them um, or other general key issues and just ask each of those stakeholder groups what their opinions are in terms of when they believe they need to meet or when they'd like to meet. And I think that would be a good starting place rather than just looking at the boards um, separate from the agenda items that, that were on the list before this happened and those that are uh, coming onto their lists. Um, I, I feel like we could use our chief of staff or, or the rest of the council staff to help do that work and just break it out and, and go and actually make contact with our board committee commission chairs, again, the alders that serve on those, and um, as a starting point, actually get information directly from the people that are most involved, because I think we know uh, what, what the groups have been working on and what we might be working on. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other, other alders in the queue and we're um, 10 minutes uh, before the eight o'clock time. Um, so for one issue that I feel like we didn't really get into more depth about is the, the role of the alders in and the structure around kind of recovery planning, which needs, I mean, and recovery planning, I meant it to be as of like now, because we need to start working on recovery plans right now from a budget and policymaking perspective. So um, I, I will put that kind of out there as maybe a possibility um, for us to have an, another meeting to think about it. And the other thing that I would say, um, back to, I think, something that Vice President Harrington McKinney said. This is a collective work, so I realize I'm the council president, but if people are interested in bringing frameworks forward for the discussion, like what would the roles and processes and structure look like for um, recovery planning meetings? Like, uh, again, Alder Rourke would put forward a 
kind of clusters of uh, areas of work? Is that a structure that we can build around, et cetera? I, I would welcome that um, work to be done in, in a group of, you know, one, two um, alders to bring forward to the rest of us. So just for the body to think about that. Um, I don't see any hands up. So I guess my next kind of thing that I wanted to talk is that right now we, ha we have scheduled another CCEC meeting for the 14th, which is next Tuesday. Um, I, is the will of the body, generally speaking, to continue having that meeting, move it to Thursday next week, which is still one empty spot in the calendar for next week. Um, and continue and maybe have the, the discussion about the structure around recovery. Is that something that would work? I, I see one hand up. Um, and then if you, if you have, um, if your feedback is different than having the meeting next week, just raise your hand. But if not, I'm assuming everybody is okay with having it either uh, Tuesday, Tuesday next week. So Alder Hack, your hand is up. I, I was going to suggest having it a week from tonight. On Thursday. Great. Thank you. We'll work on that. We'll um, make sure to send a doodle to, to make sure the majority of council members are available. Any other final thoughts from colleagues? Thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody's participation. Um, I know this have been difficult times from many angles and many ways, and also a, a, a challenging time for us to figure out exactly how we can um, get our um, bearings as far as how we can best uh, utilize our role as, as a council. So I, I appreciate everybody's patience through these conversations. Um, and I going to reach out to a few of you um, who have mentioned ideas to volunteer you for some work um, between now and next Thursday. So I hope that's okay. So I don't see any other hands. So I would entertain, I guess, a motion for um, adjournment. Oops, Alder Harrington McKinney. Move to adjourn. Alder Evers. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor signify by not raising your hand. <laughs> so if, if I don't see any hands raised, we'll take that by unanimous uh, consent of the body. Thank you, everybody, and have Thank a good evening.